Numerical Methods Problem 8.46 The Space Shuttle at liftoff from the launch pad has four forces acting on it, which are shown on the free body diagram figure P8.46. The combined weight of the two solid rocket boosters and external fuel tank WB equals 1.663 times 10 to the 6 pounds. The weight of the orbiter with a full payload is WS is equal to 0.23 times 10 to the 6 pounds. The combined thrust of the two solid rocket boosters is TB equals 5.30 times 10 to the 6 pounds. The combined thrust of the three liquid fuel orbiter engines is T of S is equal to 1.125 times 10 to the 6 pounds. At liftoff, the orbiter engine thrust is directed at an angle theta to make the resultant moment acting on the entire craft assembly. External tank, solid rocket boosters, and orbiter equal to zero. With the resultant moment equal to zero, the craft will not rotate about it, its mass center G at liftoff. With these forces, the craft will have a resultant force with components in both the vertical and horizontal directions. The vertical resultant force component is what allows the craft to lift off from the launch pad and fly. The horizontal resultant force component causes the craft to fly horizontally. The result moment acting on the craft will be zero when theta is adjusted to the proper value. If this angle is not adjusted properly and there is some resultant moment acting on the craft, the craft will tend to rotate its mass center. So here are our problems. A. Resolve the orbiter thrust T of S into a horizontal and vertical components and then sum the moment about point G. The craft mass center set the result moment equation equal to zero. This equation can now be solved for the value of theta required for liftoff. So we have to look at our figure that was given to us by the problem. So here is our figure and we're looking for the forces that affect the force the effect the torque around our center of mass G here. So we decide to have our counterclockwise forces be negative and our clockwise forces I mean have our counterclockwise forces in this problem will be positive and our counterclockwise forces in mean, clockwise forces will be negative. So here we have W of B, which is our external fuel tank moving into the counterclockwise direction. So we have it four feet away from our center of mass. So we're going to have a positive four times WB. And then we have the opposite with our T of B or our thrust from our boosters going in the clockwise direction. So we have a negative four feet times T of B. And then we must consider our other side where we have our weight of the rocket, WS, moving down into the clockwise direction. So we have 24, a negative 24 times WS moving down. And then we have our T of S K 
counteracting the W of S, but it is negative 38 feet below our center of mass. So we apply that negative 38 to T of sine of theta and add 24, because we're 24 away from the center of mass in our x direction, away from the center. So we have 24 cosine theta down here, all times T of s. So that forms our equation for part A. So we'll go back to MATLAB and we fill out our variables for our equation given to us by the problem and then we set up our equation here which I walked through earlier where we have 4 times WB minus 4 times T of B minus 24WS minus 38TS sine theta plus 24TS cosine theta. And part B of the problem says derive an equation for the resultant moment acting on the craft in the terms of the angle theta. Plot the resultant moment as a function of the angle theta over the range of negative 5 to 5 radians. So our range of theta will be negative 5 to 5 radians. And then we will plot up our graph here to fulfill the requirements for A and B. So then we go to C and ask us to write a computer program to solve for the angle theta using Newton's method to find the root of the resultant moment equation. Make an initial first guess at the root of interest using the plot. Terminate your iteration when the value of theta has been has better than five significant figures. And then simply D has us repeat the exact same program except for we change our value from WS to 195,000 pounds. So here we have we have our equation and we've plotted it up. So now all we have to do is find the correct range of uh, the correct part of our graph to look for the correct root that will get us the correct angle for our rocket. So here we have Newton's Raphson method where we simply take the derivative of the equation that we started with and then we take this equation and subtract it from x or r theta in this case and then we divide by our derivative and then repeat as we update the x to find our root of this equation. And then in part d we simply change the value of the ws and repeat the equation down here. So now let's plot it up. As you can see, we have multiple roots where our equation crosses zero, but the correct root that we want to be at is in the range of zero to two, so we use a guess of one to approximate to this root, which looks to be by the graph at about 0.5 for both part C and part D of the problem. We zoom in our estimates to both roots of part C in blue and black and then part D where we change the value of W 
was it? W B or yeah, W B and approximate the root there. And there, it should be very, very close, but the r theta will change so slightly because of the difference in the force applied to the center of mass on the rocket. So, for our first part of the equation, where our ws is 0.23 times 10 to the 6, using our Newton's Raphson method, we find that our theta is 0.1552 radians and then to check this we simply put it back into our equation T of G so T of G of X and that brings us to our zero that we are looking for and so now we look at our part D where we change the WS now WS is equal to 0.195 times 10 to the 6 and we can type that out and by changing it to that our, ra our radial result is 0 0.1730 and if we plug it back into the equation or the second equation we result in a root very close if not exactly zero at 0 0.1730 and those are the roots that we were looking for for this problem 8.46 and that is it for problem 8.46